Hey guys, and welcome back to By Jessica E. My name is Jessica, and in today's video, we're gonna be making planners. I'm very excited about it just because there's a lot to learn as far as the specs of having a planner business, the ins and out and all that good stuff. Hopefully that made somewhat of sense, but if not, just know that there is a lot that goes into um, knowing the foundation of making a planner. Now, if this is your first time tuning in to my planner series, please um, watch the first video I made on um, making planners or starting your planner business. Um, in that video, you will see me introduce a lot of things that almost like essentials to starting a planner business. And um, you don't have to get the exact things that I have, but something along that line that it will be great as, as a first off. Now in time you will advance because guess what? Your customers will advance your business is going to be advancing, so you're going to need things that kind of meet those expectations. But for start offs, people that are small like mine, who are not quite there yet, this will be a great, great uh, video for you to watch. And even for those who just wanna watch for the heck of it, thank you. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and let's just go ahead and get started, all right. Hey guys, and so we're gonna go ahead and get started on making the planner covers. Super excited, so hopefully you guys are too. So once you get done designing your design or your covers in Canva or Adobe, I don't know another software besides those two, but those two are the most popular ones um, to me. So if you know any others, leave them down in the comment box below. And if not, Adobe or Canva, I personally like Canva. It's super easy um, and it flows right with my Cricut and I don't have any problems thus far. Maybe one of these days I will sit my butt down to learn Adobe, but I just don't have the patience for Adobe. All right, so you're gonna get you 11 by 17 sticker paper. And this one is from Online Labels. It has a split in the middle and you can barely see it, but there is a split. I bent the paper a bit. There's a split right in the middle. I like it, you'll see why it's much easier, but um, just for the time of the video, I, didn't, I don't want this to be too long. I am going to then proceed to cut my measurements. And I will show you here, this is a standard 11, I'm sorry, eight and a half by 11. Let me make sure, cause I have two and sometimes I get confused myself. So what you'll wanna do is get chipboard um, this is the thickness of my chipboard. It's pretty thick. You don't have to get it as thick as this. They come in numerous sizes. So just get the one that you feel most comfortable with that fits your budget. That is very imp important as well. Also, another tip, please pay attention to the grain of the chipboard if you decide to get it made at a uh, your local book binding store. Just tell them long grain. Long grain is exactly what you'll need. Um, just something about the grade. If it's short, then it, it'll cut this way. And if it's long, it'll cut this way. It's just so the book binding can kind of stay intact. So these are your measurements. This is an eight and a half by 11. As you can see, this is Cricut. Eight and a half by 11. So then what I do and I've already done my measurements and I can put the measurements inside of the um, description box below. So eight and a half by 11 chipboard. You wanna print your design on 11 and a half, I'm, I'm sorry, 11 by 17. And then once you do that, you'll have your cover. This is the back of my cover, but the, you'll have the size of your cover and then the inside of the back of the cover. So I'll go ahead and make this one. And what I have here is some um, Ad Tech Crafters Tape Permanent. It's like double-sided tape, but a little better than double-sided tape. So again, this has a split 
in the middle. So what you will do is, and I'll tell you the reason why you will cut it a bit bigger. So this, again, I will give all measurements because it's a little bigger than my board here. But you get the drift. And then you will want to place it right in the middle. Okay? So let me go ahead and peel off one side. And I eyeball this, there's no perfect way, honestly. I literally just kind of eyeball it. And at times I'll have to kind of readjust and take it up. And that's why I don't do all of it. I just do one side at a time. Before I press down, I make sure that it's somewhat even on all sides. Meaning when I cut the edges, when I cut the four corners, that there's enough paper to cover the sides, okay? So in my opinion, it looks about good, right? So then therefore, I can go ahead, place this, put some pressure on this side where it's non-stick. I mean, sticky, I'm sorry. Sticky on this side right here, sticky. And then on this side, I will go ahead and Remove, paste it. Okay. So I press it down. And then I'll show you two ways to do it. And then there's another, some other things I want to talk about as far as the cover. So normally I'll just go like this. And again, I will literally eyeball it. Okay. I'll just make sure that there is enough room in that corner right there, enough room in that corner so it can cover it, okay? Another way is, let's, uh, if I can remember, I'll go like I'm going towards the corner and then I'll jet out. So I'll go in and I'll just jet out like that. This one takes a little time for me just because you know, I'm not too accustomed to this and I'm trying, this is a new technique for me. I seen it on another channel where she literally, she was pro. She was like, bam, 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 bam. And I'm like, dang. And I'm like, well, everybody starts somewhere, you know? So normally I kind of prefer like this, but I'm learning that this kind of gives you the better, the best outcome. Even when people do actual book binding, they prefer to do it like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my corners with that. Okay, so here we are. We have our four corners cut. This one I could have probably gotten a little closer, but it's okay, it's still okay. Another thing I like to do is, I already know it's somewhat kinda in the middle, but it does help to just double check yourself. And we are good, we are good, but that helps. Always just double check, it's no rushing, but just double check. So then what I like to do is take my um, crafter's tape right here and make sure it's on the sticky side and literally just go corner to corner or side to side with it. Make sure I get the corners really good and let me bring this down a bit. Pulled you guys down a bit further. Get in there pretty good. Be careful. Make sure that you kind of go like a, a stroke like that. Just because the chipboard can kind of peel if, you're, if you apply too much pressure when coming up. So this is where your bone will come into place. There's different type of bones. They come in different lengths. And uh, that's great thing about them they're awesome to use um this one i got from michael's y'all like any anywhere on amazon honestly anywhere has had them um i know in my opinion i haven't tried the i believe they're kind of like ceramic bones they're kind of heavier i don't know which one is better all i know is the plastics so 
moving on. So the next thing I will do is take my thumbs, bend it a bit, or you can literally just take it and go like that either way, but okay. And that's that. Pay attention to the corners. You'll want to press them in. And I like to kind of just get them in there. Dig it in. Okay. And while that's setting, you can go ahead and run your crafter's tape along there. It, it, it's okay if you get it over here like in this area it's fine because a sticker is going on there too so you push in your corners there you're gonna take this and then literally apply the pressure you're gonna need it take your bone smooth that sucker out literally Smooth it out, apply the pressure. I take my hand and even on the sides, I go just smash it in. Mind you, it's a sticker, so just it needs to adhere. Get it in there, get it in there. And then you literally just repeat the steps. Smash it in. Let it set, and you see what I was talking about? I applied too much pressure and now the chip is even, it's coming up. So I have to be careful. I literally have to just be super mindful. It'll still lay. And so here we go. I'm gonna pull it a bit and get it in there. Okay. Corners in, let it sit. Last one. Oh, still applying too much pressure. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. So, on your last one, I got one corner in right here. I'm going to work on getting this one in. Got it in. Right, so now you can take your bone and litter and just go ahead and just give it a good press in. Remember, remember the sides here. Remember the sides. And even turn it around. to do the edges down here. And then you can just do the the whole just take take it just like that. And just run it run it through, run it through. Run it through. So now we're going to work on the back of it. What I do is remember it has a back split. So what I do is once I get it kind of where I want, I just place one hand down and see one side of the sticker because I already played with it is up, but just take that off, place to the side, smooth that out. Take the other side. probably me right there and it doesn't lay before you press you can reposition real quick so now because I mess up I don't even know what I did but this will just be this is practice anyway it's fine and that is it as far as the covers and you'll just make a front and a back as simple as that so guys, I'm just gonna, just for the sake of this video, once you have your inside paper, I'm gonna bring it down a bit. Once you have your inside paper printed, you're gonna use a binding machine, like your 
cents if you have one. And you use your binding machine to punch your holes. And normally what I like to do is, this is your standard eight and a half by 11. What you would do is make sure it's all the way. I've made several mistakes of keeping it off like a little bit and it'll throw the whole thing off. So make sure that bad boy is in there. And what I like to do is hold on to it. <laughs> hold on to it. Make sure all of them are pulled out. Press down. And then I like to tug on it so it doesn't rip the paper. And then you'll get your holes, right? And you see how my lines are just perfect. So if you guys want to, if you want me to show you how to make the inside papers, just let me know. And I will show you. They have this little hook down here, or over here. Press that down. Best thing to do, take out 10. Take out 10. Okay, take out number 10, take it out. Make sure the papers are all in there. You have your lock down. Push 10 back in. Tug on them. And there you go. Okay, everything else will be done off camera because baby girl, I'm trying to make this video long. So I will show you. All right, so this is the end result. This is definitely a different design. This is not, um, the one we just made. I just showed you how to do the covers real quick, okay? And this is how it looks afterwards. So, um, corners, I, per, I got my corners from Amazon. These came from a binding manufacturer company. And then the inside pages, page, pages, you just saw me punch them with my cinch. And yeah, guys, that is about it. If you have any questions or want me to show you anything, please let me know. And I am happy, happy, happy to show you. And yeah. Let's get it popping. Bye.